Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Coffee Craft with your harried host, Anon Jr. Uh, it's, uh, it's been a week, guys. And I will probably get into that a little bit later. Um, oh, <laughs> I just realized what I forgot to do. Uh, let me see if Restream will let me fix this, because it thinks I'm still doing Games Revisited. So, uh, let's update that, update that. And, uh, double check one more time. Because, uh, <laughs> it has been a day. Alright, let's pull these up real quick. Okay. There that goes. There that goes. <laughs> and there I go. Yeah, no. It, it's a interesting day. Interesting week. Get into that in a little bit. Kind of wanted to poke around the server a little bit. Show uh, not much has changed this last go around. We've all been busy with various projects. And so... Uh, yeah, some of the spare time I've had was spent unlocking the villagers that we had over here. Reyes is still working on her llama collection. Uh, matter of fact, I think it was last night or the night before. First thing she says when she logs in is, where's my baby brown llama? I have no idea where the baby brown llama went to. Oh, we have mail. I love it. Oh, the nether brick. Awesome. Arcadius was uh, digging in the nether, which I will point out as soon as we get to that part. Uh, but yeah. So all these guys, all these villagers are finally completely unlocked. Um, yeah, okay. I just want to double check on the fisherman. Because he was the last one I worked on, and... Uh, <laughs> He was a special one to work on, too. But, yep, all these guys are now finally fully unlocked. Um, probably had to move those somewhere, too. Let's do that while we're thinking about it. With uh, Robin and Little John, we still have some of the building materials because the upstairs still needs to be taken care of. Uh, everything's lit up, but... Uh, I want to replace those wool blocks with something that will move the villagers but not suffocate them when it punches them over. I'm thinking glass might do. Uh, sea lanterns may also work? Question mark? And I may have to check into if uh, slime blocks might not be the best way to go. Just bounce the jokers over there. Um, but we will get to filling up this second floor with some of the other variety of villagers. And then we'll get to the basement and the librarians. And by the by, the iron farm has been producing very nicely. It has been a success. And we're getting a decent amount of bone meal from all the flowers now too, which is good. Um, still got to double check and see if I can create some sort of... Uh, barrier. I'm going to put air, air quotes on that. It is my understanding that if you have a row of double stacked carpet, the villagers won't think they can pathfind across it. So if I were to put some double stacked carpet where these bricks are and do the same around the villager stalls up there, they won't see each other's uh, profession block as a path they can take and we won't have some of the weirdness we had when moving these guys in here where they randomly grab somebody else's profession block until they figure out oh yeah I can't get there um, or where we had a couple of people try to grab this composter over here and uh, yeah but that is that is on the agenda let's get over to Put these bows in storage real quick while I'm thinking about it. What's over here? 
There we go. Um, let me at least move that inside. Arcadius and his note blocks. They are awesome. I'm still trying to figure out what the next one's going to be. Oh, somebody has been eating cake. Good. Trading with one of the villagers to finish unlocking him and cake was the only thing left to buy that wasn't unlocked. Alright, let us ride the rail. I love that guy. Uh, if you remember the last time, we had a bit of map missing and that has been fixed and replaced. And as we ride the rail back to my place, in the night, you know, the safest time to be roaming around the Minecraft server, uh, we got that terrain finished in the last episode, or the last episode, the last week's stream, or at least that stage of the terrain finished, and it's looking pretty good. I still got to do something about that roof. Kind of trying to catalog all the projects and things and let's sleep real quick. And I've already gone ahead and cloned that bit of missing map. But that is the server map as it stands thus far. We got our community storage in that little red square right there. We got our smelter below it. We got our rail station. Our iron farm. Oh, <laughs> looks like when we last did the uh, map update, we got a bit of the rail to move the villagers over. Uh, so that'll have to be fixed at a later point. Um, yeah, and all the other bases and things. Where, other than leveling villagers and getting them squared away, one of the one of the places I did spend a, eh, a little bit of time was over in my part of the Nether portal. Arcadius has also spent a fair amount of time in the Nether. He's been looking for an elusive mushroom biome and finally found one. Uh, it was far enough away that when you did the portal to to the island and then came back here so he's basically got a crude tunnel that goes down here that way long ways that way don't be in a hurry matter of fact that that would be a pretty good place to do a state of the server chat as we meandered on down that way. Because uh is it here? Beacon here, bring home the beacon. Where's the there. Oh, no, no. oh I still gotta do that. Yeah, there we go. Subspace bubble. <laughs> Use the nether to travel seven kilometers in the overworld. We were all kind of surprised to have picked that one up after traveling through the uh, portal. Yeah, there and back again, a Minecrafter's journey. Um, <clears throat> but over on the other side here, I've been poking around and I'd started trying to make a cheap little gold farm. Uh, basically, the idea was there's a big spawning chamber out in there. Oh, I forgot to close that. There's a big spawning chamber in there. Irritated pigmen. Hi guys. Come on. Uh, one of the problems I'm running into is stuff like this happens where only two of the yahoos come. The other two, I guess, can't be bothered. I don't know. And they don't always fall in there like they're supposed to. I'll give them a nudge. They fall down here into this pit. And they become XP and gold. There's gold in that XP. Um, yeah, and a couple of chicken jockeys too. Uh, eventually, 
I'd like to put a little mini smelter over here. Uh, maybe a two, three furnace type deal with um, powered by the cur powered by a carpet duplicator, like what I got in my base. That way, I can melt down the gold swords into the nuggets. Uh, but that's not a today project. That is a later project. I've got to figure out why the chamber doesn't quite spawn them as well as I had hoped. I suspect part of it is a distance thing because they are kind of close to me. And I like to troll like that too. Like they'll stand there. You'll get it aimed up. You'll whack him a good one. Oh, here comes a nice bunch. I, I do like that they push each other in too. It is kind of nice. Uh, but I also, uh, when, I, when I set up the station over here, I kind of forgot that there's an awful lot of uh, space over that way. So I'm going to have to rebuild this a little bit. So I got a window to a fire from over here. A safe window. Um, well, since those guys were kind enough to show up to the party, it'd be a shame to not uh, take care of this. I mean, they walked all this way. I'm really not after the XP because uh, there are better ways to do this as an XP farm. There are better ways to do this uh, realistically, there's better ways to do it as a gold farm. I would started building this because I wanted gold for golden carrots for food, and then we got villagers that are trading golden carrots for food. So that problem kind of solved itself. But, I yeah, just doing touch-ups over here, and digging out this space a little bit more, slabbing up the roof, uh, especially because there was this weird jagged ravine up at the top that was just tall enough that guests could spawn. Which, uh, blues you in into, as to why this little build took a little bit longer than I would have thought. Because, uh, I, I kept having guests say hello. And, and I, I didn't want them to say hello. So, uh, I, I spent some time slabbing up the top, stopping to fight the guests that were spawning as I was slabbing up the top. And I'll try to get that finished at a, uh, later date. There's only but so much of, uh, this that you can do. Yeah, jump, please, jump, please, jump, please. Um, I also had to slab out this area because for some reason, more than a few of them were spawning over here in this corner. Even then, there's that big old space over there. We gotta double check the spawn mechanics and how all that works. What I may end up doing at some point in... The near-ish future is actually raise the ceiling, but build uh, multiple spawning platforms. So, in other words, three blocks up, I'll set a platform. Three blocks, three, three blocks, three blocks above that, I'll set another platform, and so on and so forth, and maybe try to get more, uh, more zombie pigmen spawning that way. I mean, really, if we want to do this right, we break through the roof and. Uh, set up a stupidly massive array of spawning platforms and do it that way. But, uh, yeah. We'll get there. One of the other things that we've been working on, or at least that we've had on the plans to work on, is out a little ways, so let me go get to a nice, uh, that's a nice view. I gotta work on the, uh, render distance, though, because a lot of that's just out the way. If we head out of this way... I probably should have grabbed the longer distance rockets. Uh, we'll head back to that temple in just a minute. I want to go just a little bit further out to the first village that we had found when we started the server about a year ago now. Um, so this was the first village that we started doing a couple of trades for things. And uh, 
Uh, I protected them. They, there, there's a villager under here. There's a villager under here. There's a villager under here. They're all nice and safe and tucked away. I think there's a couple more poking around here and there. And... Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, at one point we were all talking about what we wanted to do with this area. And we're going to try to fence it in and build a refurbished village over here. And then repopulate it with more villagers. Uh, since we've got at least three of them... <coughs> Since we've got three of them, it shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be that hard. And I actually think we got a couple more floating around. I can't remember. Uh, there might still be a guy under here. That guy may or may not still be there because I know we took two people from this village to start our first farm over that a ways. But uh, Reyes has been over here prepping the area. Um, oh, look at the baby turtle. Okay. <laughs> Swimming in the pond. I almost want to trap him in there. And make a nice little turtle habitat. Um. But as Ray asked, was over here trying to figure out what was going on and what was what. Over, was it here? Nope. Nope, there's another villager over there, so... Where was it? Somewhere over here is a massive cave. Um, and in it is a massive cave system. I really thought it was over this way somewhere. Under here is a nice little cave system that Reyes was lighting up to keep uh, bad things from wandering in. And she found another abandoned railway. I mean, this is another really, really extensive railway. And just something about the, the seed that we're using that um, we found a lot of these guys. Like, there is a massively massive one. Uh, just under my base. It seemed like a good idea. Okay. Yeah, so Rast hasn't lit that much up, so <laughs> this is where we politely duck and run. Which way was back? This way was back. Anyway, so we're going to have to end up spending a, a fair amount of time going through there. We'll probably do that over the weekend when we've got the three of us together. Uh, if there's a day this weekend that we can get the three of us together. That is, uh, that is our objective oftentimes. But it is not often an achievable objective. And then over here is the project that I think I'm going to spend a fair amount of the stream today on. We go take a nap while we uh, talk about reclaiming a desert temple. Now I know Cub Fan has a video out on different ways to reclaim a desert temple. I have not seen that yet. I'm about like four or five days behind on all my stuff. Uh, a fair amount of the time that I would have spent catching up on that sort of... Th oh, bother. Yeah, lighting is probably going to be the first order. Go away. Go away. Lighting's going to be near the top of the uh, order of business. Um... Yeah, uh, the time that I would have spent uh, 
catching up on those videos this weekend was spent watching Minecon live and catching up on that sort of stuff. And that was that was wonderful. Uh, I'm kind of sad the swamp didn't win, but I I wanted them. I really wanted the mountains anyway, just for the better mountain terrain. But I am credibly accused of being a dwarven engineer in a taller body. So, uh, you yeah, know, take that for what it is. <laughs> uh, although I would have liked to have had the chest boats. That, that, that would have been the better part. I, I guess I'm just going to have to stick a llama in a boat and put a chest on his back and call it a chest boat. Uh, as you can see, I had started reclaiming things a little bit. I changed out the terracotta, so it's just the orange terracotta down in four stripes. I've got some layers of chiseled sandstone along with the uh, cut sandstone and some of the regular sandstone. I have no idea what I'm going to put down here. I might actually take it down just a little bit further and start putting some... Uh, some platforms at different levels and then start putting some uh, villager stations or something because I definitely definitely want to do a desert village uh, not a village village but a guarded village so I'm gonna need to figure out how big I want to make it so I know where to build the fence and I definitely want to get a nice good defensive fence around around the perimeter of the village um, the question is do I want to build all the villager habitation in the temple or just have the temple be like the the central marketplace type gathering area and uh, have the village out here in the desert and just start leveling this a little bit that that's one of the things that I've well, I haven't really done too much work because I haven't re <laughs> I hadn't really figured out which way I wanted to go with it. But I I do yeah. Mm. I forgot that thing was on a bit of a peninsula there. That makes it a little bit harder to defend uh, because the uh, the drowned will come up out of there. I could run a fence and appear around the water, right? Maybe build some sandstone cliffs off this side a little bit. I know there's a couple of turtles like that guy there that keep showing up over here. I need to go find him some, uh, find another one and, uh, make this a little sea turtle habitat. I think we got the other guy over on the other side, right? How hard would it be to lead him over here? Okay, yeah, no, it probably wouldn't be that easy. Um, then I don't know. That, that's really been a big part of trying to figure out uh, what to do over here. Is I'm not, I don't have a clear, clear setup of what I want beyond I want this temple reclaimed and put to some grand use. I want a village around here somewhere. Um, either some sandstone huts and villages and maybe a couple of uh, out market stalls and uh, turn the inside into a trading area but now I'm repeating myself uh, I can't push that wall out any further I can't push that wall out any further unless I want to reshape the temple and I'm trying to stick to as vanilla a structure as I can. In other words, I'm trying to keep it as close to the original shape and structure as possible. But, um, yeah. We can still put, like, you know, a little trading stall over here with a couple of merchants. Put maybe two or three in here. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to knock those back at all. I don't know. Maybe put some storage up here? Yeah, storage could work. I might uh, I might also put a uh, beacon at the bottom. Get a nice little beacon effect going out here too. I mean, I've got a beacon. That's something, right? 
So that's kind of kind of where some where the the open loops sit right now. I've also got a. Uh, I still need to get that tree farm going. I like Nimbom's tree farm. It's just a. It's a beast of a machine. It's going to take up a lot of space. It's going to take up a lot of resources. And, uh, and quite frankly, I've been struggling a little bit with the uh, energy output required to uh, to deal with a project of, of that size, particularly by the time the weekend gets here. But uh, working on that. sitting here going, there was something else I had on my list. That list that I did not write down of the things that I wanted to cover. Um, so maybe if I keep scratching at the sand, it'll come to me. Because we definitely got, we got the tree farm that we wanted to... Oh, we still also have the stupidly large furnace array. Well, we'll, we'll need an acronym for that. We'll need to find some sort of awesome acronym for the stupidly large furnace array. Um, something that gets that general idea across. Because apparently the mid-size smelter array that we built previously just isn't it's not quite enough. We need more. Tempted to build one of those uh, concrete maker. No, uh, well, not the concrete maker like what Reyes put together. Um, concrete maker, as in one of the things that Mumbo built, where you just kind of toss the powder into the thing and a, a, a TNT chamber harvests the uh, harvests the uh, concrete for you. Matter of fact, I could probably do a tree farm kind of like what he did. Then have that feed into the same chamber. That could work. That could be cool. scared to tap any of the sand over there because there is a massive valley down that way and looking I mean that is another mine shaft and the village isn't that far away I mean it's just over those trees What are the odds that that's part of the same network that goes over there? We could have an underground tunnel from the village over to the temple. That could be cool. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, some other uh, bits of uh, meta, I guess? I don't know. Um, we are, when I say we, I mean we, I, I mean me, um, I'm going to be revamping the coffeecraft.us website in the relatively near future, because so far it's been me posting links to my stream replays, and, and that's been about it. Um, and it really feels like the Anon Junior Show, also featuring Arcadius and Rayast, and I don't like that. Nobody's complained about it, but um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling that. So I'm going to move those posts over to AnonJunior.com, which is also in need of some work. <laughs> Speaking of uh, open projects, I feel like I should be uh, writing all this down. Uh, you know, fixing on junior.com, update coffeecraft.us, 
um, especially want to make sure that I get um, more storage over here. That's what I need to do. I need to get more storage over here. That's where that went. Okay. Trying to figure out where all the... All right, um, do we have something with lumber in here? I'll be okay on sand by the end of this. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Depends on how much I need to convert into sandstone. Um, anyway. So coffeecraft.us is going to get a slight revamp. We're going to try to make sure that uh, the things that get posted are more uh, server events and scheduling and things that apply to the whole of the group. You know, like when we announced the start of season one, um, that sort of thing. And at any uh, stream days where we do a special extra long stream or or some other big event. Or if there's anything else that we need to let people know about. Um, like hopefully going to a con. Hopefully. At some point. And a non-junior show. Dot com should be updated. I should be getting back into the swing of updating that in the very near future. Uh, the one thing that's really kept me from updating it is the uh, the process for updating the website is we'll go with cumbersome. Cumbersome's a good word. I mean, it's not a good thing, but it, it's a good word for what's going on. And so when you're going, oh yeah, I should definitely write something. And you go, yeah, but I need to update the templates and I need to switch over the, the rendering engine and the build process is a little slow and, and funky. Um, it, maybe I'll write that tomorrow instead because that, that's a little more work than I want to do right now. Yeah. That then you end up with something that hasn't had an update since, like, March. So what I'm planning on doing is switching my website from the Pretzel Static Site Generator, which is what I've been using up till now. I, I think I've got a couple of posts on there about it. Uh, nothing in too great a detail, mostly why I picked it and why I started using it. Uh, and I'm going to switch, I th I'm like 98% sure, I'm going to switch to using Jekyll, which is another static site generator. It is the one that I'm using to run the CoffeeCraft website. Uh, so that that is part of it, so that way I get everything on... Oh, no rabbit's foot? No rabbit's foot. So I can get everything on the same rendering engine, the same publishing process and, and kind of streamline things a little bit. I have cactus anywhere here. I do now. There's a lot of random in there. Wait. I already had a chest. Okay, fine. The scattered, scattered all over the place. Alright. Now do I want to terrain this? 
because this is where the entrance is, but I could always do some grandiose steps down another level or two. Yeah, I think I want the main of the area to be level with the waterfront. Yeah, yeah, I want the main of the area to be level with the waterfront. Now let's get to clearing. Then I'll put a uh, grandiose, oh, as grandiose as you can get in sandstone, stairway into the temple. And I kind of lost track of where I was again, um, which has been happening a lot. Uh, it's been commented upon in private that the last couple streams have been a little... Uh, uh, and since I'm pointing people at the website, I might as well point out a part that you'll see while you're there. Right now, I am on a bit of a working sabbatical. I spent 14 years working in... Well, it was a small hospital when I joined. It got bigger. And... Uh, As it got bigger, my responsibilities got bigger, which is fine. That happens. Except as it got bigger and my responsibilities got bigger, the team that started off as me grew to me, myself, and then finished up uh, with me, myself, and I <laughs> doing... Uh, doing a, a fairly fairly sizable job so I, I kind of I, I hit a I hit burnout like I, I don't mean the colloquial burnout like you know oh man yeah I, I feel kind of burned out about that I, I mean like open up your DSM and turn to and man that, that hit hard it still hits hard that's part of why I'm on a working sabbatical, and that's why I'm looking at uh, new and different career options. When I was working at the hospital in the training development department, well, one of the things that I did was some voiceover work for online training, uh, because I was the only person who knew how to use a mic and process audio. So, <laughs> congratulations. We, we need this voiced over, and, and we need it by the end of the month. Um... So that kind of got added into my job duties, and that's fine. Because uh, I did... Where did I get the... How did I... Never mind. I don't want to know. Random ink sack is random. Um, those were all full, aren't they? Yeah, those were all full. Okay. Um, so yeah, so now I, I'm taking a look and exploring some other options. I'm working in an instrument repair shop, trying to find an opportunity to learn to luthier and repair instruments. Uh, I've got some classes lined up to start with guitar, since I love guitar. I've played around with guitars, and I've occasionally been accused of playing one. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so I got some classes to work on repairing that, and there might be an opportunity to continue doing that for the company I'm with right now. Um, maybe. Possibly. Hopefully. Um, sorry. Struggling to recite and manage the blocks. But uh, that's also part of where uh, where the streaming's coming from. You know, one of the nice uh, one of the nice ways to unwind at the end of some of the more long and stressful days was to uh, to watch some YouTube videos, watch some live streams. Uh, part of it was absolutely love of the game. Part of this is still love for the game. But um, that's a little more than I wanted. Oh okay. yeah. But, um, yeah, the multitasking is really off today.
I see the sun going down. I should probably sleep on this. Um, no, no, I, I'm pretty sure I can't sleep right now. I could go to bed right now. No, no, I assure you, game. But anyway, one of the things I would like to do is turn, turn to, uh, take the audio and video editing skills I learned in developing education and start contributing a little bit to the, uh, to the online community that helped me. And so that means producing some, you know, producing some gaming videos, producing in particular, uh, tutorials, because I do... I do want to get into some redstone basics. Uh, mumbo jumbo, I am not. Any of the sidecraft guys, I most definitely am not. But, um, can definitely help with the basics. I'd like to see a, a bat. Yeah, ADDO bat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see a different approach taken to some of the uh, to help help some people move up from the block by block. I built the machine exactly the way specified, but uh, it doesn't quite work right. And help people at that point grow to the ability to do some troubleshooting, and then grow from troubleshooting into maybe combining two or three different machines that they saw and putting them together. Uh, and that's about the level that I'm at right now, if I'm being honest, is I, I can do, I can look at the tutorial, I can make some basic adjustments for considerations that I have, like uh, we've only got about this amount of space, but I want to do that amount of work. So maybe if I just move this over here and that over there and connect it up like that, and there we go, that ought to work. And most of the time it does. Not usually the first go around on live stream, but uh, it, it usually gets there in the end. And uh, that's the frustration of sandstone. I need a less efficient pick. Um, and so I wanna help people work on that part. I'd also like to take my programming skills, since, you know, that's what my actual degree is in, and maybe put together a couple of, uh, couple of data packs. Um, I don't want to get into full-on modding, but I'd like to get into, into building some data packs. If you've been following the streams for a while now, you'll remember back in the 1.13, before we upgraded, I had an idea for a data pack I wanted to do and I was waiting for 1.14 and then it got kind of set off to the side and I forgot about it. Matter of fact, I need to write the time code because I want to publish a clip of this. Forty-three thirty ish to some undefinable point or not yet defined point because uh, what I want to do is I want to ping the guys over at Vanilla Tweaks not for them to make it for me but for them to point me in the direction of good resources to learn what I want to learn uh, one of the things that I've found over the years is that you don't necessarily have to know everything about what it is that you want to do you just have to know enough to formulate the right questions for filling in the stuff that you're trying to do and i'm not sure that i have enough knowledge about data pack building to ask the right questions yet so i'd like to ping the vanilla tweaks guys and see if they could point me in the direction to do a coffee data pack yeah, the idea being that I could clone, inherit, um, I'm not sure what the, what the appropriate, um, term is, and that's one of the things that I need to figure out from, uh, from somebody who's done this sort of thing, what the appropriate term is. But I'd like to take the sweetberry bush 
and model a coffee bush after that. So you'd have your coffee berry that you could use to plant a coffee bush. And then it would go through the stages of growth and then you'd have a harvest of coffee berries, which is pretty close to the way it actually works. You, know, you, you have coffee bushes that produce coffee berries and the coffee berries are cooked into coffee beans which you then grind, roast and grind up for your coffee. And then life begins again. <laughs> um, and so, you know, get, get, a, uh, get a good coffee bush, coffee berry thing. Uh, probably, even though I don't want to do it that way, set it up so... Ooh, gravel. Hello, concrete. Um, man, my brain is all over the place today. Um, and set it up so that, um, you can either plant the berry or roast the berry into a coffee bean. And then using the existing brewing stand, you can take a bottle of water, no nether wart, unless you want like salty coffee or something, and in which case, why? I mean, I know there are people who put a pinch of salt in their coffee and, and I just, I don't get it. Um, other than they claim it uh, cuts the bitterness a little bit. Uh, hey, if you like that, more power to you. I know people look at my black coffee and go, how can you do that? Uh, so, who am I to say? Uh, but anyway, so you can roast the coffee into a bean and then use the existing brewing stands to to brew coffee. So you get a you get a, a water in your coffee in your uh, brew, in the brewing stand, and then just like you'd put any other brewing ingredient, you would put in your uh, coffee bean, the roasted bean, and it would produce a potion, black coffee, which you could then drink. And it would be another way to get the haste effect. <laughs> because why wouldn't it? Um, and then if you wanted to, you could enhance it. So instead of using redstone, you could use a bucket of milk. Um, and you could also use sugar to enhance the coffee. So you could, um, if you add sugar, it adds a little more haste. Um, if you add milk, it increases saturation. So if you add milk and sugar, um, you get coffee with, you get off-centered stairs. Um, <laughs> you get coffee that has haste and, uh, um, that has all the effects, all the effects. And so that is the, uh, that is, that is the mod, not really mod, that is the data pack that I would like to put together at some point. Um, and again, I, I have a background in programming. It's what I was originally hired to do was to build the website that hosts and tracks and conducts all the web-based training. Um, however, my languages are a little out of date. My, I... The learning management system that I built for the hospital was written in ASP VB script. That is ye old classic ASP. And I have to specify classic ASP because Microsoft in their infinite wisdom put out a new version, ASP.net, because that wouldn't confuse anybody. And uh, 
So if I say that I did all my programming in ASP, people hear ASP and think ASP.NET. And they are sadly confused and disappointed when I try to explain, no, no, no .NET. Uh, there was no .NET when I started learning programming. And then I feel old. Because I've been programming since before there was a .NET. Go ahead. Keep laughing. Your day will come. Your day will come when you say cliff notes and they go, Huh? Uh, spark notes? Oh, okay. <laughs> where you finish a massive event and say, let's all go out for some drinks. And they go, but we're not 21 yet. <laughs> kind of reminds me of something that uh, Brian Brushwood was talking about on the latest Cord Killers. He's been, Now that his daughters are old enough, he's been trying to introduce them to... Uh, the TV shows and movies that he enjoyed growing up and that he enjoyed, uh, you know, they're, they're classics. And so he sat down and watched war games with them. The, the, those of you who uh, been around a little while will remember that war games is set in uh, Cold War, the Cold War era. If you don't know what the Cold War is, ask your history teacher. <sighs> and, well, that, that was actually one of the problems he was running into. He had to pause and explain what the USSR was, what the Cold War was, what the, the deal about the nuclear weapon system was, <laughs> What that rotary phone was, how the very, very young looking Matthew Roderick uh, was managing to make a phone call on, oh, what's that? A payphone? <laughs> what's a payphone? <laughs> it just all sorts of, all sorts of things that, uh, you know, when you're there, you don't really think about it all that much because, you know, you were there. You grew up with it. That's that's normal. How is that not normal? What do you mean that's not normal? Um, that goes one block away from the edge. And, uh... Oh, I forgot to mark the end of my uh, mod thing for the... Well, we'll say that was around 50-ish. And so trying to explain all these uh, older concepts to his kids just kind of really reminded him that while it is still a cinematic masterpiece that most definitely holds up to uh, modern scrutiny and sensibilities, because let's face it, not all movies from the 80s hold up all that well, you know. We might want to think otherwise, but they don't. And uh, the only problem is that because it was very much a product of its time, it it's only really uh, meaningfully impactful for children who grew up in the 80s and 90s and... Uh, Maybe the early 2000s? Probably not, though. No, it wouldn't be. Because you, you would have to remember that there was a USSR. I had a, I had a globe growing up that had the USSR. Um, heck, I remember when the Berlin Wall came down. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Old man and on junior. Ranting and raving about them kids. Not ranting, per se, but just kind of reminiscing? I don't know. I don't even know how I got on there. Oh, old classic things. So 
So you can see by the title, State of the Stream, it's a bit of the state of the streamer. A little bit at all, a little bit uh, a little tired, trying to figure out uh, what's next. Uh, that's part of that. Now we're getting back to uh, part of the reason why the produced episodes have been uh, delayed. Not coming out as quickly as I would have wanted to. Because uh, the last couple years before I quit working at the hospital, I did less actual video and audio production and more coordinating the building of training resources. Um, editing, arrangement, uh, that sort of thing. And so... The video and audio editors that I am familiar with, uh, let's just say a couple of the companies don't exist anymore and a few of the products definitely don't exist or have gone through radical alterations. So uh, I'm looking at the rather daunting prospect of uh, not just learning a new skill, stitching together the the video, the gaming videos, and trying to produce content and doing the writing for this sort of content. But I am also looking at, uh, how far down does that go? Well, yes, I am looking <laughs> how far how far down that goes. But um, I, I'm also looking at having to relearn all the software around that too and figuring out what what software I want to to learn and standardize on, uh, because that that will that will change things a little bit. That I, I've been looking at a couple of open source programs because they are free, and budget is an issue. Uh, although a good a good video editing system is worth its weight in gold. You, know, uh, you can spend all your time fighting with your software or you can get work done. And I much prefer to get work done. So I gotta decide if I wanna go ahead and start uh, rushing up on uh, newer that almost worked. Brushing up on newer programs, newer software, uh, commercially, the commercial software, or if I want to keep trying to futz around with open source programs. Um, some of them look good. Some of them look promising. But, um... The question is, will the project be around... Forever, or not forever, but at least as long as I needed to. Will uh, you know? Will I be learning the skills just to have to learn something new again later? And then, what do I? Where do I? You know, where's the best? Uh, where's the best use of my limited time? Because this is a working sabbatical. In which case, I am actually working, you know, I'm doing 40 hours a week on the regular. And, uh, and that's got to get factored in too, at least until the gaming stuff takes off, if it does. Or I get something else going. Um, ideally, like, if I get the, the best of all worlds... I would be doing a combination of the gaming and guitar repair. You know, enough guitar repair to supplement and enough gaming for fun. You know, that way I'm not so reliant on one project or the other that it becomes all-consuming. Because I do, I, I do hear a lot of the content creators talking about uh, some of the problems that they're running into where they just get run down and burnt out because it is the only thing that they do and it's the only source they got coming in and uh, I'd like to diversify things I 
I swear I'm going to name this turtle. I, I, I think this is his beach. That's probably why he's staring at me, trying to figure out why I'm demolishing his beach. Should I name him? Fred? Bob? No, we already got a Bob. A Bob from Boston. Boston. <laughs> Alright, so the... Yeah, soup. No, I am not naming the turtle soup. Uh, okay, so three down from the cross. Go oh, maybe one more out. Two, three, and maybe one more out. So this level's definitely going away. Well, that wasn't a sound I wanted to hear. I have no idea what it signifies, but I'm pretty sure I don't want it here. I call him Ninja. That rotten flesh. No, those are fish. I was gonna say if that was rotten flesh, it should have disappeared by now. I should probably also put a door on this place too. It's nighttime. Can't you see? We just got done with old man and on. It's nine o'clock. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> there we go. Uh. Oh. <laughs> uh. Inventory's a little full. Entombed in the temple is a chest monster, and it's growing. <laughs> Slay it. Where's a Belmont when you need one? That's right, they're over at that castle. Sandstone. Yeah, okay, so that's not bad. I, yeah, I definitely want to work out from... From uh, sea level, as it were the steps up. I need to clear out a little bit. I definitely want to put a pier. Yeah. I want to put a pier coming out this way a little bit. Um, I gotta figure out some way to make sure the drown don't, you know, crawl up on it. Um, I'll definitely need some sort of fence and... Uh, if you remember over at my rail station, I've got, it's a four-way station, and I've got one way still open. That's because I want to run a rail from my base in the mountains out here. That's going to be a bit of a grind. That's going to be a lot of a grind. Um, right. I'd rather have the gravel. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd like to be able to take a rail out this way. That'll also put that village not too far away. You know, maybe I'll build a, uh, rail station over here. You're looking at me for Name you Java. You keep looking at me like that. I 
don't want to backfill that little bay there either. I mean, I'd like to have the land kind of curve a little less dramatically to give me a little more room behind the temple, but uh, I ain't filling that in. And I'm not listening to the drown growling at me from under the water. Um, so I guess I'll just have to find another way to go about it. sandstone in because I don't want the rocks showing this is supposed to be a desert temple after all. Look! The dolphins! <laughs> the dolphins are cute and nice. And I know everybody loves that they play with uh, whatever entities happen to be floating in the water. Which seems all cute until you're trying to harvest kelp. And they're playing with the kelp that you're trying to harvest. Then, then they seem a little less cute. It's why I'm okay with the fact that the vulture was not selected in the, uh, in the minecon bit to be added in. Because I kind of like the idea of the vulture. It'd be nice to have a, another bird or flying entity to uh, to interact with. On the other hand, they were talking about how the vulture was going to uh, really like his loot. And I did not want to have to hunt down a vulture to go recover my loot. On the other hand, you look at a couple of redstone engineers like Mumbo and Iskow. And um, they <laughs> and they're going, hey, if the vulture goes back to the same spot every time, that means we could actually have like a flying item transportation system, because we we could totally find a way to give the vulture uh, an item and then you know have it fly it back and then harvest it from his nest. <laughs> Are you guys kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? talking about adding in a vulture and you're talking about the possible farm that you could build if vultures bring things back to the same spot every time. Yeah, there we go. That worked. To make the village center a little oasis, like a little uh, little pond with just a little bit of grass around it, and then a tree, maybe an acacia tree, since those are already a little sparse looking. Where am I gonna put that tree, though? I'm actually thinking, yeah, maybe I'll do the oasis out here, maybe. Like, build, build a little... Oh, I guess it's not really an oasis if you're, you know, that close to the water in the plains. Yeah, scrap that idea. Now let's build a fountain. Cut back. Or down. when the creeper showed up. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking about how low the uh, blast resistance is on sandstone. I mean, you just gotta kind of look at it funny with the pick in it. 
digs up, I'm probably, yeah, I'm getting far more than I'd originally intended to break. Because that's not going to cost on the old repair bill. Yeah, I'll shape that later. I need to get an area clear first. about why I haven't been able to get the produced episodes together. Let's start thinking about what I need to make that happen. Um, I need a theme song. I mean, <laughs> it sounds kind of silly, but that, that is definitely one of the things that I want to have in there. Um, originally, I'd actually wanted to write it myself. Towards the end of my tenure at the hospital, one of the things that kind of dropped by the wayside was my guitar playing, and uh, I'd like to pick that up and actually write my own theme, something uh, kind of a simple uh, blues shuffle, a little bit more of a rock and blues shuffle kind of deal. Um, though I'm not sure if that's gonna if that's gonna work the way I want. Uh, I could go to the YouTube Creators Library and just download one of the ones that they have. Uh, that's where I got the at least half of the music that you're you're hearing playing in the background now is from the YouTube Creators Library. The other half was from uh, Incomptech. Um, I posted an article on the CoffeeCraft website with where what songs I got and uh, what each one is, and I think when I get uh, when I get that article moved over to anonjunior.com, I'll start linking to um, where I got the music in the description when this gets uploaded to YouTube. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah. I really need to see if either one has any uh, more audio because it's you know the same dozen-ish songs. They're, they're, they're just enough of length that uh, even in a two-hour stream, it doesn't feel repetitive, even though we do end up looping back and covering the first couple here and there. But uh, with it being background music, it's a little less bad than if it was uh, all you were listening to while the stream was going on. So that does help some there, too. I need to figure out while I'm sitting here putting the sand I'm realizing that I need to figure out what I'm going to use for a road because um, over at the castle I used sand to make the road uh, sand, unless I go out to the mesa and get some red sand I could do that or I could do the concrete powder I can make a nice concrete powder road. Which would be nice. But what color? Now, what is the color? What color road would be in a desert? Um, maybe white or a light gray? I like the idea of a white concrete powder road because I've got tons of bone meal and that, that means that I don't have to work too hard at uh, figuring out where I'm going to find the inks because, uh, you know, 
I, I'm sure Reyes would say that I definitely need a black concrete powder road because, you know, we're just swimming in black ink. No, the black ink is swimming out there. <laughs> but, uh... I've got the orange terracotta in the build, and I definitely want to keep using that as highlights throughout the different structures that end up going up. So maybe, maybe doing the orange, orange concrete powder? Mm, I don't think that's going to match as well. Um, yeah, I'm definitely thinking the, uh, the red sand from the Mesa would be the better, better way to go. Um, put this down somewhere. There we go. Actually, let me do that right now. Let me uh, empty out this inventory real quick. Let me go back to the base and get some... Some red sand and some orange sand. Or orange concrete powder. Sorry. And then see if uh see which one looks better as a rude. We'll have to get this guy a friend. Maybe I'll steal a turtle egg from Arcadius. From his ethical turtle egg farm. Yeah, because I used the sand here. Uh, I'm probably going to keep with... Uh, well, I've got sea lanterns in the temple itself, so maybe I'll use a uh, oh the cyan. Oh, <laughs> we have so <laughs> no, no cyan. I mean, Reyes did make up a fair amount of the cyan dye, so it's not like we're, we actually have a shortage of that. However, comma. Uh, yeah, not orange concrete. Um, not melt the sandstone. Let's grab a little bit of red sand. Ooh, I could use a little more of that too. Uh, and okay, so I'm gonna need sand, gravel. Yeah, I've got the orange terracotta in the. Um, I've got the orange terracotta in the actual build. So that's why I was thinking possibly orange sand. Um, I guess I do have some cyan. No, I'm not using the cyan. Um, die. And let's make a little bit of orange concrete powder. I can drop the rest of that sand in there, and the gravel in there. That is a that is some awfully orange concrete powder. Mm. All right, let's head back and actually look at it near the build, because that's going to make the biggest difference. I suck at taking off. I try to find a high spot to jump and hope that I can deploy the wings in time. In case you're wondering. Oh, that's right. I meant to grab the uh, longer flight duration rockets. Yeah. That's not bad. That definitely sticks out a little bit more. Yeah, I might have to sub in some of the chiseled sandstone for a few spots for some of the rings. And maybe some more of the that cut sandstone 
No, leave the cutscene. Oh, ow. Ran out of floor. Yeah. Just leave the cut sandstone for the doorways. So maybe put cut sandstone there. Do the same on the other side. And then put in uh, some rings of chiseled sandstone here and there. Bloody oath. <laughs> okay, alright, so. If this is the main doorway, da -da -da -da, that means the walkway is going to have to go out. Not that deep. So that would be... Using the red sand. Definitely keeps well with the uh, sand texture. Doesn't clash too much with the orange terracotta. up. Oh. Oh my. That's, uh, that's bright. That looks like a bunch of people got spilling their pumpkin spice latte or something. Or somebody just like pureed pumpkin and tossed it in the sand. No. No. No, the orange is a no-go. No, that, that orange sand is just a little too much orange. Like, I mean, I love oranges. I love orange juice enough that it is a health risk. Um, but that orange, no, no. No. No, there, there, there's no... Eh. Is there a dark orange? Like, can I mix some gray with the orange to darken that up? I don't, I don't, I don't think it works that way. There's only what the 16 colors, and if you don't like it, then go, go, go mod it. Um. <laughs> All right, let me sleep on it. You know what? Even in the sunrise, that that's a big nope. That's a whole lot of nope. That's too bright. Oh, no. I mean, the, the, the texture of the uh, cement powder works as far as matching in with the sand. I, I do like the way that blends, but... Um, yeah, that's just a little more muted. Well, guess who's about to harvest a whole bunch of red sand? This guy. Fortunately, there's a mesa over by the uh, Guardian Farm, which will have some red sand still, maybe, possibly. Yeah, I like that better. I almost like it enough to maybe just do the uh, the main stairs in red sandstone up to the door. Leave the rest of it the regular sandstone. I'll think on that one. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, but we we've got all this other sand. <laughs> Glass doesn't grow on trees. No, it comes in the form of a wandering trader. And a couple of villagers, too. I mean, what is it? I think it's one of the... Isn't it the librarians or one of those guys that, uh, that'll trade you some glass? I think it's the librarian. 
I know one of them does. Curse my failing memory. Which Yahoo is it that actually sells glass? Not the Mason. Although he, he'll have it. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll get plenty of trades from me too as I go to put some quartz trim on various things. Why is there quartz in the desert? I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, that's not bad. I definitely want to stick to sea level, which means I'm going to have to flatten a lot more of this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. sand, which is good because I'm going to need a lot of sandstone for the buildings, because that is the next question. Am I going to build everything in the temple and fortify around the temple? Or am I going to actually try to build a... No, I, I've already started clearing it out. I, yeah. I'm going to try to put a... Um... Well, no, I could put all the beds and the villagers inside the temple. Like, make the temple the community housing and all that sort of stuff. And then put some uh, workshops and stalls around the uh, around the temple. Yeah, you know, make kind of like a little open farmers market. Well, farmers market out here. Um, that could that could work. Building building houses is not exactly my strong suit. Which is why I really need to be working on it. Which is probably why instead of trying to just build all the housing in the temple, uh, I should do the I should actually do the desert houses. So I force myself to practice on that. But seriously, I'm tempted to just you know set a floor right here, knock holes in the wall, and put little rooms, you know, like a little hallway that way, a little hallway that way, and then. Uh, I'll put some floors and rooms and stuff. Maybe do a little bit of the orange glass and lighting for each floor. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's a thought. I'll have to keep thinking about it, because either way, I really do need to push the desert back just a little bit more. Without collapsing that mountain. <laughs> we'll see how far I can go before, or how long I can go before I actually end up collapsing that whole stupid thing in because I hit the wrong, wrong bit of desert. And that counts as an update for that massive pile of sand. Which is why I keep menacingly swinging my shovel over there. And cutting closer, right? Alright, so I guess this is going to be the next little project for a while. Uh, Alright, so... Updated about the website. Updated about a couple of the projects that are on the burner. The hold up with the produced videos. I'm trying to run through that mental checklist of things that I intended to uh, get into. Gotta get the changes to a non-junior up because I, I definitely want to get my website updated in such a way that uh, I feel more inclined to actually publish some blog posts. With November coming up, I might try the the sort of NaNoWriMo that I tried last year. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month. And so a group decided to take November, and a lot of people work better when they have a deadline or when they have something planned and scheduled, even if they weren't the one who technically planned and scheduled it. So the whole idea behind the group is that if you just say, you know what, 
November is National Novel Writing Month, and I am going to write a novel. That's it. Just write it. Not going to edit it. Not going to have it ready for print. I'm not going to redo anything. I'm just going to sit in front of a screen, typewriter, whatever, and write. And there's a certain word count uh, goal for the end of November. There's all sorts of calculators that, like, if you start on the first and you want to meet the... Uh, average goal for a paperback novel then if you write this many words a day you will you will hit your limit by the end of the month <laughs> you know that kind of goal setting stuff uh, while I do want to write a novel that is uh, definitely on my bucket list um, in the short medium and to a greater extent longer term it would be better to get back into uh, back into blogging and actually getting a regular thing going. Some stuff about Minecraft, some stuff about programming, uh, some stuff about training, and, and, you know, trying to... So much of what I built is tied up at the hospital because they own it. And so I can't, you know, republish it. I can't repurpose it. They own it. And, and I tried talking to, to legal beforehand about maybe, you know, regaining the rights to some of the stuff because some of it they're not using anymore either. Um, but, uh, yeah, that legal is not noted for their charity or forward thinking. Um, so, <laughs> so instead of leaving, uh, leaving knowledge and stuff locked up in, uh, some other location, you know, revisiting in a non-infringing sort of way a lot of lessons and uh, ways to go about structuring training and education, that sort of thing, uh, programming lessons learned, uh, you know, to my great benefit and great detriment, I was a, I was a programming team of one. Um, it is widely recognized, and I definitely understand the wisdom in it now, in hindsight, that you really should have more than one person on a programming team. Uh, if nothing else, to get another person to, to look at that and go, no, no, why, why are you, no, that's, that's not, no. Just put the keyboard down, walk away, go do something else for a little bit, and then we can look at it, and you'll see why I'm telling you with with great love and respect no um, not not having that person there uh, definitely impacted some of the software I wrote um, and so I'd like to I'd like to actually kind of revisit and write about some of those lessons learned so other people can learn from my experience and you you won't end up being that person that does that thing you'll do other things because we'll all make mistakes. I'll keep making mistakes. Um, but this time writing about them so that way more more people can benefit from it than just me. And when I start getting into Minecraft tutorials, like some of the redstone lessons, I'd like to actually have a... Uh, okay, there's a fish. Uh, I'd like to actually start having a written blog post to accompany those sorts of videos because one of my one of my critiques one of the things that I keep running into is that videos are nice for getting an overview but they're really hard to follow and build along with it because the video keeps rolling whether you're ready for it to or not you get all tab out pause go do that thing maybe back it up maybe you know pause it again play it again back it up and and it would actually be kind of nice to have a written thing on the monitor next to you that went over what you were doing step by step. So that you, it worked at your pace because it only scrolled when you scrolled forward. So of course you were ready to move on because if you weren't ready to move on, you wouldn't have scrolled forward. Um, and so start doing that and see if uh, see if we can't 
change the community outlook on that too. Because I, I think that is an approach that a lot of people would benefit from. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm the only one who, who would prefer having that sort of thing around. And it's just a weird quirk that I have. And, you know, I, that's fine too. That would be a lesson learned. That would be a thing that we could do that uh, would help the community, maybe. Or at least help us figure out, uh, yeah, that's a nice idea on paper, but uh, it doesn't work out so well. Shallows a little more shallow. In case you're wondering. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Alright, so we got the area cleared out. Temple's nice and freestanding. Or figuring out where I want to put uh, buildings and such. Now I'm gonna instead of making apartments in in the temple. Might make that the marketplace. Clear out these chiseled stone some workstations and subfloors. I can take that down a little bit further if I need to. And then uh, and then just have a couple little huts outside. So make that the center in the sense of that's where all the workstations are. That's where the work gets done. Um, and then maybe have, uh, have a little small house that. I really don't like doing the small houses, but we'll, we'll start with that as foundation. Maybe have somebody over here-ish. It's even smaller. Yeah, no. And this is why you mark this stuff out. What am I going to do with the road? We'll go out here, we'll have the pier out over here, directly in front of the door. And then we'll have another little road come off to the side here. We turn down the lane here, and then start doing the houses. So yeah, that's what I need to do. Before I start trying to place houses, let me lay out the roads. For that, I need to head back to the base yet again and grab some more red sand. Fair amount of it, too. Get those back on the hot part while I'm at it. Alright. So that's a plan. back with me. Yeah, I'll get that out of the way. I'll leave that. I'll take that. Go ahead and take that now. I'll take that now. Yeah. Okay. And back to the base we go. I mean, I guess in a way it's not that far. I just have to come from here out. Probably make a hard right and then, oh, yeah, I gotta figure out where the station's gonna go in, too. Where is that station going to go? Because that's going to help with the, uh, the rail, too. 
Decisions, decisions. Although I'll probably put just a terminal there. Uh, well, I don't know. Do I want to do just a terminal or do I want to do a four-way station like what we have there? Because if I do a four-way station over at the Desert Temple, uh, we could make that a way station on to the refurbished village too. Which would also make it easier for us to get villagers. Because that village would always top off its population. And I got a funny feeling that once we get the bulk of what we want done, we're not going to need that many. Although I'm still going to build a villager breeder over on the other side of the mountain. Um, because I'd like to build one. And I like building farms. Um, you know? I just realized I don't... I don't have a box for concrete, really. I got the terracotta, but, you know. I might have to do something about that later, but I might have to do something about that. Alright, um... Oh, that's the nether brick. It's like, I got a shulker box, don't I? Sandstone, but not that much. Alright, let's see if that's enough to do the roads at least. That's not a lot. That doesn't leave me with much more off in reserve. But again, the uh, but you know uh, the uh, whatchamacallit the, the the maze is not that far away and it's still got some red sand over there I don't think it's been completely pillaged yet oh yeah yeah, that red sandstone works. Even when you're looking down from above, that that works. That fits in. as I get started. I'm going to promise the bed that it is indeed, in fact, actually nighttime. Could it please let me sleep? sense for the stairs. Really, I don't, nah, I, don't, I don't like the aesthetics of that. Um, go out here like this. Let's keep the road three wide. Putting in the 
sand. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's what, two away from the bottom there, or three away. It's not centered, but it's far enough away from the beach to feel about right. Maybe I'll set up a couple of fishing holes. I know exactly who will be there fishing every day, too. Um, let's see. I want a little bit of a breathing space between there and the buildings. Let's go ahead. Turn this right here now. Make this maybe be here. sand yeah I didn't realize that apparently the uh, the Mesa is the only place that generates red sand and it only generates a layer deep I think uh, I think we've got eyes on another Mesa in addition to the one back there if I remember correctly I could be wrong about that So on the road going this way, we'll get some houses going along there. We'll get a couple of smaller houses along there, or maybe an apartment building along there. That would finish it up there. All right, yeah, maybe I'll push that further back. Yeah, push that hill a little bit further back, and that way I can run the defensive wall. Um, I'll have to find something to mark it off. <laughs> um, do something along the waterfront here, and then start an actual defensive wall maybe back here-ish. And run it here... And then a hard left over here. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to trigger an update on that sand that causes that whole thing to cave in on the valley. At least not yet. Then why did we have... Reyes put that there to remind us that something was there. But for the life of me, I don't remember what... There, but that'll have to be for another day. Uh, we got a little bit of progress done over here at the Desert Temple, so I'm going to go ahead and put um, put these blocks away. I think I'm going to leave the remaining red sand here for now. Um, just because... Pretty sure I'm gonna have to come back to this again. Neither move or uh, change some of the roads. That leaves all the supplies here. Let me get back to the main base. And I think we'll call it a day for today. Hopefully, this weekend I'll get to. Um, I'll get to building the uh, tree farm so we can show that off next week 
and hopefully I will have an actual recorded episode out um, for <laughs> for the uh, for the season opener. I would yeah, opener. I mean, we we've been broadcasting since like what uh, April May. Somewhere around there. But for the actual produced episode opener, I'd actually like to do another server tour and uh, introduction. Because I know we did that in a stream a long while ago, and I've had some people since ask for that. Um, so give, give a little introduction of who we are, how we got here. Do a quick tour of the server as it stands. And then from there, I'll have to start planning out some episodes. I tentatively, I really like the schedule to be such that uh, I do the episode planning on Friday after work, do the principal recording on Saturday, and then maybe do the final editing and publish on Sunday. So that way the produced episode can go up Monday on a schedule. And then Tuesday will be the stream. And, uh, and then do that for a little while, see how that works out. Um, that is the idea, at least. At least for now. And then maybe, uh, maybe once I get settled in on the editing, start in on the redstone tutorials. And kind of, you know... Working through, working through the redstone basics, working through some troubleshooting redstone, you know, the kinds of things to look at, and taking a different approach to redstone tutorials, because there are some wonderful ones out there. There are some absolutely amazing ones. Um, but they all seem to run the same general way, with the same general themes, and the same general progress, and then, you know, it almost always starts off with an inevitable... Here are the 82 redstone components you could possibly ever maybe use. Let's run through all of them right now and what they do. And I'd like to try to take take a, a different tack based on uh, based on what I've done with adult learning. Oh, I got some bells. I went to put a doorbell up uh, on this door here, and then I realized it was so close to the farmer villagers that. Um, they would start freaking out if anybody rang it. And I'd really like to not freak out my villagers. I'd really like for them to work and produce, you know, more than 17 miserly potatoes and 20 carrots. That is another farm. That is another thing I'd like to do. Um, I, I'm looking at... Um, I forget who the author is. They made a one chunk farm and it's just a stack of different farms that all fit within a chunk um, so there's a carrot potato wheat um, I could probably modify the wheat into also getting beetroot because one of those villager yahoos trades in beetroot for some reason um, and just kind of stack those up into a, uh, a silo and get that going so we get a community vegetable farm, so, so to speak. Maybe throw a community melon and pumpkin farm on top of that. Uh, that way we'll all have food, and we'll all have food to trade with the uh, villagers. So when the emeralds run low, you can just start uh, trading with them. Alright, let me find a nice quiet place. Uh, there is no quiet place in this space. No matter where you go, there's a piston something or a dispenser or something else, and uh, there I go ahead and try to get a little bit better about surreptitiously going to the stream tools and uh, say thank you very much for joining in, and I... I apologize for being a little rambly. Uh, if you do like hearing the more uh, general chat chat and chatter type thing let me know in the comments i will have this uploaded to youtube so if you're watching on mixer or twitch the youtube channel link is in the description below if you are watching this on youtube and would like to catch it live i do this tuesdays at 6 p.m u.s eastern 
At least that's the current schedule. The Twitch and Mixer page will have the most current schedule on them. And you can find links to those in the description below. So right now I'm multi-streaming, uh, simulcasting to Twitch and Mixer. So choose your poison. Although honestly, the way Mixer's been lately, it might get cut. Uh, just saying. So anyway, the links in the description will have uh, will have whatever it is that I'm working on. AnonJunior.com will always have the latest information on where to find what's going on. So this stream happens Tuesdays at 6 p.m. I have another game stream that I do on Thursdays called Games Revisited. Right now we're going through Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the good game, not the MMO. And uh, we're, we're about, uh, I'd say a little bit better than halfway through. We've got three of the five star maps. And... Uh, well, if you want to find out more, all the past episodes are up on the YouTube channel. And uh, the next stream will be in two days. That'll be Thursday at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. And uh, who knows what else I might have going. Um, oh, that reminds me of the last thing that I was going to say. And you can definitely post this in the comments on the YouTube channel. I'm thinking of taking some of the some of the stuff that I, some of the clips and stuff that don't quite fit with the main channel and putting it in on a second channel and I'd like a really witty name for a second channel that makes it clear that it's mine makes it clear that it's a miscellaneous uh, like I've got a guitar project that I I'm going to be working on for the classes where I've got a kit guitar and I'm going to assemble it and I'd like to do update videos, put the raw update videos on the second channel, and then once the whole thing is done, put a shorter compilation of the build process on the main channel. Because I will have more than just game stuff on my main channel. Uh, been wrestling with that decision for a lot. I, I keep thinking about, wow, well, I want to do some of the guitar stuff, but I don't want to put that on the main channel. So Anand does guitars. No, no, no. And so the main channel is going to be all the main stuff, all the produced stuff, um, and stream archives. And uh, the second channel is going to be kind of some of the one-off stuff, uh, or the off stuff, or the the backstage kind of things. Uh, so some sort of witty name for a second channel for the miscellaneous. And uh, thank you. Have fun. Enjoy. <laughs>